Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we're going to be making this. It's a bevel gear with a motion link. So two bevel gears on their own axis and a motion link between them. You can see that you drag the one and the other will move correspondingly. So let's get into it. We're going to start off by going into our utilities menu and then going into add-ins. So we've got scripts and add-ins here where you can um, find a, quite a few add-ins. One that's common is the spur gear. All you have to do is double click on there and we're going to see it gives us, um, gives us a couple of standard measurements for a spur gear. I'm going to make this a 24 tooth spur gear, just the default that they spit out there and click OK and there our spur gear is so what we need to do now is create a sketch on one of the planes so we'll go back into solid and we'll do it on the front plane you'll see next why we're going to do this L for line tool and I'm just going to draw a line going straight up 80 millimeters now it may seem a bit random but we're going to need this point to orient our gear. Now I'll go move copy and we're gonna go body. We'll select this body and it's just move type will be free move and create copy. I'm just gonna lift this up more or less to that point we created and okay. Now we've got two spur gears of the same size. That doesn't help us too much what we need to do now is scale this top gear down to half its size. If I push S, it brings up my shortcuts menu. And if I type in scale, you can see there we've got scale. So in our scale option, we select the entity, the point is selected, and the scale factor would be 0.5. So that's 50% of the original size. So we can see we've got two spur gears, uh, one is smaller. Now we need to line this one up with that point over there. So to do that, I'm going to go back into move copy. I'm going to select body again. And we're going to go point to point. The point I'm going to select is this center point over here. And the target point will be the tip of that line we drew. There we can see now it's nicely centered above our other spur gear. We're not actually going to use these components, we're just going to use them to create a sketch. So I'll create sketch on this face over here. And I'm going to push P for project and then simply click on the spur gear. Now it's projecting all those lines for me. And okay, once I've done that I can actually turn the spur gear off. You can see it's got that's where it's components there and there we have our spur gear. I'm just going to get rid of that little hole in the middle. I'll do a new hole later and finish sketch. Now we're going to repeat that step with this top one. So create a sketch, select the top face and P for project and click on our spur gear. And there we've got our spur gear projected. Now to show you, we can just turn that body off. Again, I'm just going to remove this center point there. And we finish sketch. Now we're going to create and we're actually going to loft between these two faces or profiles. It's bottom one to top one. And we can see that once it there we go, once it creates it, we've actually got a nice tapering edge because the top bits of the gear are scaled down according to the scale factor that we inserted. Um, a bevel gear doesn't quite look like this. So we're just going to put a, make a little trimming tool to trim around the sides there. So I'm going to go create, and it doesn't really matter which face you draw this on, we're just going to create a triangle here. So. L for line tool and this can be sort of 
any way you want so long as it's um, covering the right sort of area you can feel this one out if we have a technical drawing we could do it according to that but let's go with this and see how it works if we don't like it, we can just go back into the sketch and change it I want to select revolve we selected that profile and the revolve axis will be there okay so we can see it's trimmed it nicely if I had to go back into that and change it to just drag one of these points because it's not fully constrained so we can just drag it around we have a very different looking bevel gear so I'm gonna go back in there and we'll just undo control Z and I will repeat the previous one here we go so we've got our bevel gear and that looks pretty good like I said if we had a technical drawing we could do it to specification but unfortunately we don't I'm going to create a sketch on this top plane now so on this top face and C for center diameter circle you could also just click up there and I'm gonna have a shaft that's 20 millimeters so I'm drawing my hole there or my circle and I'm gonna extrude that out so when I click on extrude select that I can see the arrows going up so I'm just gonna put in a negative and I know that was 80 so I'm just gonna put negative 100 down know it'll go through and there we have our center hole but I'm not done with that yet I'll go back in there make sure the sketch is on and center hole again this time instead of a cut operation we're going to do a new body make that negative 250 and it's going to be a new body select OK now we've got two distinct bodies here once I've made all my bodies, I'm just going to convert them all into components. But let's do the fun part now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a second bevel gear so that we can have a motion link between them. So I'm just going to right click on it and move copy. And it's going to be a rotate. Oh, one important thing I forgot is I need to draw a plane on which to rotate this. So I am going to go back into I can go back into the sketch I did on top. I'm just going to draw a line, L for line tool, just out to the side at a 90 degree angle. So now we just need to be on the correct plane. So I'll now go right click, move copy, and we're going to select bodies. So I want this body and that body, and our axis will be that line we just drew and we're going to create a copy so if I got this from the side we're going to rotate this 90 degrees so I'll just type in there minus 90 and there we've got that we're going to change our move type to free move and we're going to get this into a position where we can see these gears meshing so obviously we're just going to eyeball this it doesn't have to be perfect this is just a way to illustrate um, how we can draw the bevel gears and how we can get them to be interacting with the motion link. I think that's a bit far now but we can check. I'll go back into rotate. The axis will be there and we can turn it a few degrees. If we zoom in we can see if they're touching. I think they are a little bit tight so we can go back and change the move type to free move and I'm just gonna move it a little bit out and a little bit down click OK now we can see that they are pretty close now before we animate them we've got to do a couple of things so we don't need this top body this is our original spur gear so we're going to, let's just rename these, bevel 1, and I'll call this one shaft 1. The next one will be bevel 2, and then shaft 2. 
Now we're going to select all of them. So I just click the top one, held down shift, then click the bottom. And we're going to say create components from bodies. So now we've got our components over there. The reason you create a component is because you can't create joints between bodies. They have to be components. So I'm going to turn off the sketches there so we don't see any of those lines. And before we animate it, I just want to change the appearance. So I just pushed S for shortcuts key and then typed an A and it brought me the appearance menu. So we're going to have a stainless steel, a polished stainless steel. Get some red, it'll be a red anodized aluminium, glossy, and then we'll go for a blue. Also anodized, glossy. So now we can just drag these over onto the body. And now we can create our joints. If we look at these, if I click on it, I'm still able to move it around freely because it's not joined or relating to any other component. So I'm just going to control Z to undo that. And shaft one and two, I'm going to right click on there and say ground. I'll do that for both of them. Now you see if we try to drag it around, it's not moving because it's grounded. Now we can start with some joints. So I'll create a joint, a motion joint will be a revolute joint. And first component will be the shaft and the origin will be our bevel here. So sometimes you just gotta make sure you get the right thing or else it doesn't quite work. Let's see, nope, that flipped around for us. There we go. And we can see the motion is the way we want it. So I'm going to click OK on that one. Now you'll see if I grab on this and try to pull it, all it will allow is the revolute motion that we originally started with. I'm just going to go back into joints here and I'll revolute joint. I'm going to go to go to home position. That'll put it in the position where we had them meshing. Although that doesn't look like it's meshing so great. So we can just adjust that. So I'm just going to drag this one and move copy. I just want them to be in the correct position. When we add the joints axis will be this axis and he needs to move a lot just a little bit and that's close enough what we're going to do now is add the joint and our second bevel gear so joint motion will be revolute and we will select our origin as that point on our shaft and this will be the center over there. So if I drag that we can see it's able to move now. So we've got these two gears that aren't quite lined up. And we will set that as home position. So now that is the home position. What we want to do now is click on the assemble drop down and we're going to create a motion link. So over here we've got motion link and it's, we're going to capture this position. So this will be the origin position of our motion link. The joints will be this joint and that joint. And we can see they're running in opposite directions. So I will select one of them, change it to negative. Um, if these were different gear ratios, we would be able to change these figures so that they line up correctly. If we wanted to reverse the motion, we could do that. But I think we're okay there. So I'm going to go have a look at it. 
if I drag it, you can see they're moving together. And here's a nice view. What I want to do is just hide the joints and we will animate. If I go animate joint, it'll only show me the movement of the one. I want to animate the joint relationship. So there we can see they are moving nicely together. And there we've just created some bevel gears with a motion link joint. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down in the comment section. If you need to get in touch, my email is in the description. It is fusionfundamentals at gmail.com. Until next time, bye.